Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about Isla Sorna, the second island that was introduced into the franchise and also the home of Engine's original factory floor. So, Isla Sorna, also known as Site B, was the location where John Hammond chose to create most of his dinosaurs before later importing them over to Isla Nublar for Jurassic Park. I say most of his dinosaurs because, obviously, in the first movie we see that Dr. Wu was actually working with several fertilized eggs on site, which of course rules them out of the Site B equation. Now, one of the most interesting things about Isla Sorna happens to be its untimely destruction. And this is mainly due to the fact that a lot of the information surrounding what happened to the island has been shrouded in mystery even still to this very day. If we go back to what was explained to us as having happened in The Lost World, John Hammond says that after the incident at the park, Hurricane Clarissa tore through the island and wiped out most of their facilities. The on-island staff was forced to evacuate, and the animals were left to fend for themselves. After seeing this take place, it became pretty apparent to Engine that their notorious Lysine contingency was a pretty big screw-up because all of the dinosaurs wound up flourishing on Site B, even without the supplemental enzymes that Robert Muldoon and Ray Arnold brought up in the last film. Now, Hurricane Clarissa is never given a concrete date in the film canon. There actually is an exact date in an earlier Lost World draft, which puts it as having taken place 24 months before the events of the Lost World, which would mean around 1995, but that's never said explicitly on screen in the actual movie. And it also can come into conflict with Jurassic Park 3, which we will of course go into in just a little while down the line. That being said, this hurricane was bad enough to make the whole worker village and other parts of the island look like they'd been abandoned for decades when, in reality, the working date was more or less something like two years. And with all the people off site and all the dinosaurs running wild, the island would of course turn into a chaotic part of planet Earth filled with lots of exotic species. And I guess what they were going for is just let's make this whole island look ruined, destroyed, and decrepit, which, hey, they succeeded in doing. But possibly the most baffling part of Jurassic Park lore that still hasn't really been explored in full detail has to be the exact happenings of this hurricane's landfall. In my opinion, this is probably among the most serious of JP events due to the fact that it would eventually lead to the events of the second movie, which of course led to stuff like Jurassic World and the subsequent events of Fallen Kingdom. But within the actual franchise canon, this whole time period is extremely fuzzy. For example, when it comes to the abandonment of Site B. All we really know is that sometime close to the events of the first movie, a storm hit the second island, everyone got on the boats and left, and all of the dinosaurs were left to fend for themselves. That's pretty much it. At no point in time in now over 20 years of Site B's existence have they ever really tried to tell us what engine was even doing on that island post-1993. Or in other words, what I'm trying to say is what their plans were after the fall of Jurassic Park. You see, in the original film, John Hammond has this big elaborate timeline of events set up during the lunch scene, where you can see that he was on track to expand and open up more Jurassic Parks all over the world during the course of the 90s. Earlier in the movie, he tells Sattler and Grant that they're going to open up next year as long as the lawyers don't kill him first. And in that exact scene, you can actually see a calendar in Grant's trailer that tells us that the current year is 1993, which means he's currently planning to open in 1994 the following year, granted if he was to ever get back on schedule. But with Jurassic Park failing in 93 and the Lost World's early script stating Hurricane Clarissa is taking place in 95, that means Engine would have been on the island for a full two years after Hammond decided not to endorse his park. So what exactly were they doing there anyway? Well, keep in mind, this whole period of the franchise is extremely fuzzy, like I mentioned earlier, and that Lost World underwent a lot of rewrites the closer they got to filming. But that still doesn't really explain what was going on in Jurassic Park 3. When it comes to how Site B is depicted in the third film, we see that there's all kinds of cloning equipment and dinosaur eggshells scattered throughout the Embryonics Administration when Grant and the others pass through. Now call me crazy, but this kind of calls that 1995 date into question, since this would imply to us, the audience, that the last thing the Site B staff was doing before they left the island was still cloning more dinosaurs. And keep in mind, this is all after the events of the first movie, where John Hammond did not want to endorse his park, so he leaves in 93, but for some reason they're still hatching and cloning dinosaurs up until 95? 
This basically would imply that the scientists would continue to clone animals up until Hurricane Clarissa hit. Now, granted, most audience members don't even know about the 1995 storm date, and if you just go by what's seen on screen in the movies, it can kind of seem like Isla Sorna was abandoned around the same time as the first island. As a kid, I always thought that the same tropical storm that hit Nublar later on passed through Sorna, and this is why the Embryonics Administration was in the state we saw it in during Jurassic Park 3. But that isn't necessarily what they had in mind while they were making the movies, nor is it something that I think current Jurassic World canon wants to accept. There's a lot of lore and information that came out in 2018 that basically implies that the date discrepancies we see in JP3 are a result of the whole not on engines list dialogue we hear Grant go on about. Basically, some guys came back to the island after the Lost World and cloned some more stuff in secret without the public knowing about it. Which would of course help explain stuff like the Spinosaurus, but putting all of that stuff aside, there's still the weird question of what engine was doing on Site B after the events of Jurassic Park, and yet still before the events of the Lost World. The real fall of Isla Sorna has never really been shown to us or even explained outside of the very tiny bit of info that we got in the second movie. And since John Hammond didn't want to pursue the opening of a Jurassic Park or Jurassic Park San Diego after the first film, it's kind of a big unsolved mystery as to what was going on. I'd say that it's totally possible that Engine was trying to just keep some of these animals alive and well kept after Jurassic Park fell, but still, that doesn't really make a lot of sense considering the company would have been bleeding from the throat after 1993. And that doesn't even factor into the equation all of the eggshells and dinosaur fetuses and stuff we see in JP3. So if you're not going to open up your dinosaur theme park, why continue to clone dinosaurs like you are? Of course, there was a viral marketing website that happened to be up in support of the Lost World way back in the day that tried to help explain some of this further, but that canon was also kind of tongue-in-cheek and also made to promote the Jurassic Park ride at Universal Studios, so it's not exactly the best source of information. Especially since things like Operation Clean Sweep, which I've done a full video before on in the past, are mentioned as having taken place there, however, also mentioned as being called off before it was carried out in the Fallen Kingdom viral marketing. So yeah, it just gets a little fuzzier the deeper you get. Bottom line, when Jurassic Park was abandoned, the small population of dinosaurs on Isla Nublar would pretty much go untouched until the events of JP3 came and went. But the population of dinosaurs on Sorna would be exploited and sought after all the way back dating to 1997. So did Hurricane Clarissa take place in 95? Well, if you go by a Lost World script, then yes. But if you want something more tangible, then no. But that could be explained away sometime in the future as well. As of right now, looking at the movies by themselves, I just have the giant question as to what was going on on Site B after Jurassic Park happened and before the events of the second film. With Colin Trevorrow teasing that embryo box with the words Site B and Isla Sorna for Jurassic World Dominion, I'm sure we will get some sort of information on something related to the second island sometime down the line, but as of right now, all we really have to go off of are the second and third movies, which of course don't really explain everything too much as far as what went down on that island before Lost World took place. Anyways guys, I just wanted to share some of this information with you all and see what you guys have to say. There's a lot of mystery surrounding what happened after the first movie and it gets especially complicated once you factor in Hammond's mindset and motives in the Lost World, which would seem to imply that he really doesn't want to build another park. I think we can all agree on that. But then again, why is Engine still doing dino engineering on Site B if that's really the case? I fully understand that this is way deeper than any casual fan would ever explore on their own, and it's probably not something a lot of people have even thought about, but with that being said, I'd love to hear what all of you guys think about the subject matter. What are your own individual thoughts on what Engine had going on post-Jurassic Park as far as Site B goes? What do you think they were doing on that island, and do you think it could have been something as simple as just basically taking care of the dinosaurs that they'd already bred. A lot of the stuff immediately goes away as soon as we factor in the new viral marketing websites, but if we just put that stuff aside and look at the first three movies by themselves, I got a lot of questions, and since there's teases of Site B in the next film, I wanted to know what all of you thought about it. So whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them. In the comments down below. Now before I go, I want to thank all of my game wardens. 
as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Robert Feltham and Tiago Fernandez Alves de Cruz. Guys, it seriously means the world to me that you continue to support what I do, and I never want you to ever forget that. Now, I'd like to thank all of you for watching this video, and hope you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.